this is the first video in my series on Netlify and Serverless. Netlify is a fantastic tool that you can use to run websites. So it's it's free hosting for the basic level. There are obviously paid levels. You can subscribe to Netlify and pay for a professional version. But if you're just looking to do something like build a portfolio or test out new technologies and see if you can run things, this is a fantastic tool. You can use your GitHub account to log in. Now in this first video, I'm going to be talking about uh, just building something on your computer and then running it on Netlify and having it up and running with HTTPS up on Netlify. Uh, the second video I'm going to get into tying it to a GitHub repo so that you can push your changes to GitHub, use your normal workflow with GitHub, and then Netlify will automatically pick up the changes in your repo and update your live website. All right, and then the third video, I'm going to be getting into serverless and how you can run sort of server-side node scripts through Netlify. All right, so let's get into this first one. On the website, Netlify, so app.netlify.com, I'm going to log in with my GitHub credentials. That will take me back to Netlify, and here we are, logged into Netlify. Now, right now, I don't have any sites up there. I've cleared out my uh, my hosting that I was using this for testing but we can build websites here and there's a button here I'll get into next time talking about how to bring stuff over from github right now I have this up and running so I've registered for an account I've created an account with Netlify just using my github credentials now I'm going to jump back to my computer and what I've done here is I've created a folder in VS Code. I've added an HTML file. It's pretty basic. It's just got a header. There's a link to a style sheet. The style sheet has just these few lines of CSS. There's really not that much here. It's really just to have something that I can work with. Now, to use Netlify, we need to use NPM. You need to have Node installed, so you've got NPM. And then we're going to install Netlify the CLI, the command line interface. Now you can use npm i for install uh, or npm install dash g is the global. So once we've done that, now I've already done this, so I'll just jump ahead to the end. And there we go. So that took about roughly a minute to install everything that we needed. But once you have this here, you've got all the tools that you need to work with Netlify. So I'm just going to clear out my terminal here. Anytime that you want to know the command line commands, you can say Netlify help, and that will give you the full list of all the commands that we have access to. If you're looking for a reference for all these commands, this link is down in the description of the video right now, so you can Take a look at any of these commands and see how to use them. And there's some additional options for them as well that you can get through the, the interface here. Now, with this installed, what I can do is I can turn this folder with these couple of files into something that's able to communicate with Netlify. So I'll clear it out. Netlify init. This is the command to turn this into a Netlify project. We run that command. There we go. There was no git remote found. That's fine. We don't need one at all. Uh, it asks if we want to connect with the GitHub repository. I don't. I'm just going to do a, a basic website. All I want to do is take this folder and host it on Netlify. So I'm going to say that right here. Do I want to start without a git repository? Yes. Now you can use the arrow keys to switch back and forth between these choices here. And I'm going to say yes, I want to create and deploy it manually. There we go. This is my team. And I come up with a site name. I can hit enter and they'll come up with a name. You can see here, they'll give you sample possible names that you can put in. But let's just do a Netlify basic one, two, three. There we go. It created that site for me. And there's a folder right here, .netlify, that got created. Inside that, there's the site ID. So this is all the settings that Netlify needs within my folder to tell it where to connect with. It also created the git ignore file, just in case you were going to have a git repository. And this 
.netlify folder is something that's going to be ignored. That's not going to be uploaded. All right, now down here at the bottom, we can see the admin URL. This is where we can go to take a look at our site. There's the name that I had. The URL, this is the URL that I could give to anybody. So deploy to this site, run your site build, and then Netlify deploy. So we're going to get into that in just a second. I want to take a look up here. We're going to refresh this. And there it is. There is the site that we've created. It says manual deploys. If I click on that, it tells us it has not been deployed yet. I can zoom in here a little bit for you. So the site has not been deployed. And we're not dealing with GitHub, so there's no reference to GitHub here. Um, as soon as I deploy my site, it's automatically going to give me HTTPS support inside of here. And I have the ability to add a custom domain. So if I've got a domain name registered somewhere, I can set that up to point to this location. All right. Now, we've got our basic website right here. I'm going to clear that out. What I want to do is, let's say I'm working on this and I want to test it locally. There could be some additional functionality. Maybe there's some JavaScript that talks to an API. I want to test it locally. So we can use Netlify to do that test. We can just say Netlify dev. That is going to start up a dev server. You can see right here, server now ready. So command click. There we go. And here's our site up and running. So localhost 8888, that is the port number. So it's got a little server. It's running it as a development server. If I make changes inside of my code here, so let's say we just add a main element with a paragraph and some lorem ipsum text. I save that change. I refresh. And there it is. There is the content up on this site. So simple way to get up and running. Now when I hit control C or yeah, control C, this is stopping this process from running and I no longer have this site up and running, but it's a quick and easy way that we can use to test things. Now, if I wanted to, I can actually push this development version of my site, this sort of temporary version up onto the web, onto Netlify servers, so I could share a link with somebody else. We do Netlify dev live. So dash dash live, we add that to the end of the command. When I do that, there we go. You can see server now ready here. There's that name that I came up with, Netlify basic one, two, three. And then it adds this special identifier onto the end. And instead of it being the Netlify app, which we're going to see in a minute, this is Netlify.lev live, sorry. And here it is. So instead of the local host 888, this is actually something that is up and running. So I have uploaded this to Netlify. They've taken everything that I had inside of my site and put it onto their server. I can now share this URL with people and they can take a look. But you'll notice here that my terminal, it's being used. So as soon as I do the control C again, I've stopped that server running. So I was running a remote server there, you can see that it's not working right now. Okay, so we've shut it down by doing control C. So dev will run it locally. Dev dash dash live is going to push it up to Netlify and give us a URL so we can share this with somebody else. Now the deploy command, this is where we're going to take it from here and actually upload all the content. And we're going to be able to see it showing up inside of here. I refresh. It's still the same thing. It still says it has not been deployed yet. So instead of dev, we're going to do Netlify deploy. Just like that. Now, if we just do Netlify deploy, this is going to be the preview version. So it's going to ask us some additional questions. When we deploy, this is actually a chance for us to create something inside of here. Sometimes you're building websites that have build commands. 
Maybe you're working with SAS and you need to compile the SAS into CSS. Maybe you're going to copy a bunch of files into a folder. There could be files in here that are only supposed to be for dev, and I've got a folder called dist or build, and that's the finished version of the site. That's this publish directory. I'm going to be using just the regular one. So I'm going to hit enter here. That means I'm taking the root level. So there we go. And it has done this, my draft deploy. That's what I did, Netlify deploy. This is my draft deploy. And you can see app.netlify.com sites. Uh, there's where my log is. And then the draft URL, Netlify basic one, two, three, netlify.app. But it has this big prefix in front of it. And here we are. Up on the server, there's this draft version. So again, it's kind of like the dev testing version. This is up on the server. It's been uploaded. If I refresh this now, we can look at our deploys. Here's this deploy preview. So it says site has not been deployed, and that's true. There's no production version of the website yet, but there is a deploy preview. And this is the version that we have running right here. So this was the live dev one. This is the draft version of deploy. That's the one we can look at here. But if we want the full one, we can say Netlify deploy dash dash prod. Now that is going to do the same sort of thing. Publish directory. There we go. And now what we get, if we refresh this, there it is. Now here's the full link. Here is the published version. So I can click on here, I can click on here, either one. If I open that in a new tab, there we are. There is the full URL with the name that I came up with, .netlify.app, and here's the content. And every time we do an update, so let's say my main element here. I need to add some padding to put it in line with the rest of this content. So let's do that in our CSS. We'll come down here. We'll say that the main is going to have the same padding as our header. We'll save that. And then we'll run our production deploy again. Okay, in our published directory, same thing. Now we can skip over this published directory and there's a settings file that we're going to be creating. It's a TOML file. If we come back in here, we refresh this. There you can see, here's the latest one. Now, because there was just basic uploading of files, there was no build scripts or anything that had to be prepared, um, this doesn't take long. You can see with other sites that are a little bit more complex, you can see that there's going to be a build message here. And you can click on that and you can actually watch it as it prepares. You can actually watch it go through the steps of preparing the site to be live. This one, it's an HTML file, a CSS file, it takes no time to upload. Oh, that's our uh, draft one. Let's close that. Here's the real one. Refresh, and there it is, lined up. So we've updated that. Now our settings file, you can just create that. It's basically just a text file. So netlify.toml. It's a toml file, which is very similar to YAML if you've ever worked with YAML. And there's things like the build settings. We indent below each one of these headers. Uh, there's other sections we'll talk about in later videos. We're going to talk about the publish folder. And that is going to be equal to our current location. So there is no other folder. Now, with this settings file here, if I run this again, there we go. It doesn't prompt me anymore to know what is the publishing folder because it knows that this is the root folder. This is where the publishing takes place. And if we refresh this again, we should see, yep, there it is. There's our third production deploy. There was no change here, but we can see it's up and, up and running. Okay, so that is a basic introduction to Netlify, just being able to take content and put it up. 
Next video, we're going to be talking about how to tie this together with GitHub, make it part of your workflow with GitHub, use npm and package.json and, and all the GitHub settings. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.